The following is a presentation of iRacing on PTR TV. We'd like to thank all of our channel partners for their support. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. As another season of the Red Sox Racing League enters its waning stages, we head from the upstate region of New York across the pond here to Germany for tonight's race. We head to the famous Hockingheim Ring here in Germany, a track that has been in existence since the early 1930s, has seen many different iterations here from a Formula One staple through the forest to the now reconfigured about 25 year old layout. Uh, which is much tighter confines. Well, we're not going to be in Formula One. We're going to be taking some GT3 cars around here on the 2.8 mile layout, and we'll see what happens here on the evening. Welcome, everybody, to PTR TV for tonight's race of the Red Sox Racing League here today at Hockingheim. It's going to be, as I said, race number five of their campaign here in their spring GT3 series action. And be happy to give you all the action again. I'll be Corey Silva in the booth and in the production truck giving you the solo effort here tonight. And uh, let's go down trackside and see what is about right now. Qualifying, of course, is on the docket right now. We got a field of about 22 drivers here uh, taking their hand to Germany to see what they can accomplish. Ryan Robertson, after a week off at Watkins Glen last week, heading back here with a vengeance. And you can see that is one of the largest margins of between first and second that we've seen um, in quite some time, up by about six tenths of a second over Mark Kedrowski. Uh, but from what I did see in all preliminary practices, it was a lot tighter than that. Um, some drivers who uh, probably have not run yet uh, or have not run their flyers, uh, I still expect a little bit more to be had there um, in the form of uh, you know, Dave Hill, uh, who he has been fast. You have, of course, uh, Mark Rich Kedrowski, uh, who has been doing uh, quite a good job here this week. He is down there as well. So. Uh, we'll expect uh, maybe a, a little jumps on the times here, and uh, we'll see if some of these guys can hop up on the pylon. But again, qualifying still underway. And uh, let's see what we got here. About a minute and a half left, so most of these drivers will have their laps uh, already uh, situated here. But I'm just going to refresh things here. I see a little uh, overlay glitch there that I'm not expecting. We'll just give a quick refresh there. But again, Dave Hill, I looked at the practice sheet here and i'll do that um in the meanwhile here just uh well i got a couple seconds to do so uh tommy ryan was actually uh again he won last week at watkins Glen, and as i'm just trying to scroll through quickly to find the uh the standings here they are the race uh practice session uh mark kudrowski was the fastest in the tuesday practice and then on uh, the saturday practice and then mark kudrowski was fastest on Saturday, so you do expect those two drivers to be up there, 38-6, uh, 38-7. Uh, those were the times that were ran, so I guess Ryan Robertson being up there at a 38-3, those times were not achieved by anybody in preliminary events, so uh, I guess that will uh, kind of dictate that situation there, but uh, we will see indeed what happens. We've got the cool-down lap still ahead of us, so everybody on track right now, they are still able to complete their lap, even if you had just started, you got about another minute in the bank before the session will kind of boot you on out of there. A couple drivers have yet to turn laps uh, in the name of Brian Irby and uh, Greg Harris there. So uh, 20 guys have taken time here on the evening. 
And uh, let's take a look at our weather conditions here today again from the Hockeyheim ring. You can see here the sun's starting to go down just a little bit. 7.55 virtual time based out of May. So this will be a little bit darker of a race than we've seen in recent weeks. Typically we're right around 7. We'll go right to the edge of sunset. I would not be surprised if the headlights do turn on here. Uh, the weather was set to be cloudy and then slowly clear up over the uh, festivities here. So you can see that it is still being dictated as a cloudy session, but as we go on board with Mark Wilson here, um, you can see here from a couple different camera angles that the sun is starting to uh, poke through here on the clouds. Um, so we will have uh, that to look forward to here as he is battling right along with his teammate there. Dave Hill crossed the stripe and did better him slap just a little bit. And uh, he'll now go to a fictitious backup car after mauling the fence there in turn number one. And that turn number one curve uh, really tests you because you have to take it with as much speed as possible. And then that puts you into the Bernie Ecclestone curve number two, which is kind of a hairpin led by a switchback. Puts you down parabolic of the long straightaway in to spitz I mean, I, I don't even, I know I can't say that right, but either way, it puts you into a hairpin for turn number six. So uh, some good passing opportunities here. Again, Hockingheim, of course, track that has been famous for many years. It was one of the fastest Formula One tracks um, that was in existence in uh, right around 2001. There was some safety issues going on and I guess some security issues uh, with sp spectators being where they're not supposed to be. And Formula One kind of gave them an ultimatum saying, if you don't do something, we're not coming back here. So that's why we... Ha now have the run from three to six uh, rather than going through the forest here, uh, which was the uh, famous land here. I don't really have uh, a good perspective of the forest here, but um, either way, that is uh, no longer, and you can still see it from Google Maps, and a lot of people will still kind of cry about it, but either way, it ain't coming back, so... Uh, this is the cup of tea that we have on our table here today. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in here to PTR TV. If it's your first time, don't make it your last. Hit that like and subscribe button on our mission to get 1,300 subscribers. We just need your help to help us get there. So every last little bit helps. But these guys are going to go down trackside for our starting lineup. And we're going to go down there and join them. Let you know where they're going to be starting from here today at Hockingheim. Starting today's race on the front row, not much of a surprise there. It's going to be Ryan Robertson with Dave Hill to the outside of the front row. P3 is going to be Mark Kudrowski with uh, Les Turner in fourth. Fifth, we're going to have Mark Wilson. Sixth, going to be Todd Marampietri. In the seventh spot, we're going to find Nathan Lafayette. And then J.P. Phillips going to be in the eighth spot. Ninth to tenth, going to find Jim Graziano and then Robert Seneville there in that number tenth spot with just a 139 second lap bracket. You got Dennis Griffin in 11th, Andrew Humphrey in 12th. 13th finds Sheldon Rosenbaum and then Kevin Kyle going to be in the 14th spot. 15th is Dwayne McCarthy and then Bill Paul Lucky. He was involved in that melee last week at Watkins Glen in the bus stop. He's going to be in 16th with Jared Levingston in 17th. Scott Huston out of Pennsylvania in the 18th spot. 19th and 20th finds Ed Sutcliffe and then Mark Adji. And then our final two drivers here on the evening. Uh, we're going to have Greg Harris and then, as I mentioned, Brian Irby going to be shotgun on the field here tonight. We already went over our weather conditions. Of course, 30-minute races here in Red Sox with our limited fuel loads. Gives us a pit stop anywhere between probably the 10-minute mark and the 25-minute mark, usually what we see here in the series. And you got to keep the car on the track. And you got to get back to the pits under your own power post-race to evade any form of penalties. But... Uh, we are starting here on our shortened pace lap between uh, turns number 11 and 12. So we will, uh, you know, as this is kind of the the beginning of the drag strip here. As you can kind of see, that is the uh, the drag strip uh, scoreboard signs there off in the distance. And this will put us into 12 and into the stadium section here. A very tight confines here that will lead you into number th turn number 13, which is a... Uh, Pretty decent passing opportunity here. Be a left-hander. 
uh, for turn number 13, relatively sharp. So you'll see some guys make some moves. A little bit of banking in that corner, not drastic, but certainly noticeable. That puts you into a little kink, uh, which qualifies as 14 and 15. And then sued curve, turn number 16, will put us back onto the pit straight. Red Sox Racing League race number five of their spring GT3 series coming live right here from Germany. Ryan Robinson, our control vehicle. He's going to get into the start zone. He's going to wait for Barney to go ahead and wave the flag, of which he does right there. Let's go racing here at the Hockingheim ring. As we fire off into turn number one, Dave Hill falls right back in line. They are going to be under immense pressure after last week. Uh, to ensure that they get through this corner nice and safely. Admin does not want to see what we saw last week. That is very uncharacteristic, and it does appear as such that everyone minding their P's and Q's, making sure everyone can get through safely. And then uh, just as I say that, we have a three-car wreck. This is very unlike what we see here in the series. That's going to be uh, Kevin Kyle, uh, Bill Paul Lucky, and uh, Sheldon Rosenbaum. Uh, all having issues there, exiting turn number five. We will uh, sort back on the replay what happened. I do believe Sheldon Rosenbaum may have just gotten loose by himself there. Got to look for that blue and black car dead center in the screen here. Exiting turn number five, just got loose by himself. But we'll have to dissect that a little further because uh, Bill Pollock, he kind of came out of nowhere there. Ah, uh, Kevin Kyle. Now, how did that happen? We will, uh, I don't want to miss too much, but I want to try to sort this out here. Kevin Kyle in the red, white, and blue car. He got loose himself, and when he got loose, that threw him into Paul Lucky and eventually into Sheldon, who was already detrimented there. So, yeah, not a traditional start here in Red Sox, but, I mean, that was not of overdriving. That was not of any uh, ill will. That was uh, merely a wreck caused by kind of just bad luck, unfortunately. Uh, no other right really to say it there. Uh, but these guys will uh, complete the first lap. Ryan Roberts up by about eight tenths of a second over the competition. As uh, we do go down the long straightaway here, a Parabolica straightaway turn number five. And uh, then we head down into turn number six, the super sharp hairpin. This is where we had a, a wreck, I remember a few seasons ago, uh, we saw quite the wreck in this corner here. And I'm not quite sure why the scoring is not updating properly right now. It is kind of struggling with that 15th position right now. So uh, I'm not quite sure as to why and I don't really have the ability to try to fix that now. In fact, I will. Um, I'll try to give it one quick go here because it is rather distracting to have that being how it is. But uh, again, Ryan Robertson out there by about six tenths of a second or so over Dave Hill. And again, the kind of perplexing thing is going to be, uh, I thought that Kodrowski was going to be a lot better here today, but he's currently uh, nowhere to be found here. Uh, at least in this top three. I think he's back there uh, just a little bit further back, so we'll see if he can charge through the field here on the evening. Uh, but Ryan Robinson will come off the final corner, complete one another lap here as, uh, again, our half-hour effort does commence. Again, next week will be our series finale for the spring GT3 season, so you'll want to make sure you uh, tune on into next week's race. I will have... Uh, my partner Bradley Dalton in the booth would be next week, so that will be uh, fun to witness. And then uh, we'll wait and see what the announcement is for the schedule in the following season. And then I, I do apologize for that, folks. I don't quite know why that 21st position. I just did a broadcast with the same set of graphics, and there was no issue on that. So I will have to uh, dissect what was going on there with that 21st spot. So. Uh, Sheldon Rosebaum being out of the race, and uh, again, on our 16th spot is going to be, I believe, uh, Mark Adji at the moment. So, um, sorry for that there, but 
Again, up front here, we don't have much going on, but Mark Wilson, he is looking, looking, looking to try to make a pass there on Les Turner. And uh, just behind Les Turner, you have Todd Baron Pietri. So uh, some guys having some good battles here on circuit. And it does appear that up front, Mark Kudrowski, oh, he's in a different, no, no wonder I was struggling to find him here on the evening. He has a, uh, a different livery than he normally would have in that number 944. Uh, he is a, in a black car. I don't recall ever seeing him in a black car. So uh, changing things up here on the evening for Mr. Kudrowski here. Just throw me off, though. So nothing wrong with that. Always nice to shake things up here, spice things up and... Uh, uh, make some events special. We've got Kevin Kyle, who is uh, still in the pits. Robert Seneville uh, has just made a pit stop. Not sure if something happened to him. This would be very early to have a pit stop naturally. I, th I don't think this would be in the fuel zone. So uh, we'll see if anything does come up with him. Uh, Mark Wilson seeming to still be challenging uh, Les Turner. That's going to be a battle for the fourth and fifth spot. Great run by Les Turner here tonight. Um, this is certainly one of the best runs I've seen him have. He is uh, trying to uh, see if he can maintain that top five in terms of pace. He is uh, a little bit slower than Mark Kodrowski, but uh, it is also bringing Nathan Lafayette in that uh, red double zero. Uh, we got a bunch of Porsches here, back to back to back. Our next Ferrari will be back there in, uh, with Dennis Griffin in the ninth spot. And of course, uh, we got two Porsches leading and then two Audis third or fourth. So uh, not as much parity as usual. We've got one BMW here in the race and uh, about two for uh, four Ferraris. But most of the Ferraris, ironically enough, were all involved in that lap one skirmish. So very interesting there and unfortunate for those guys that that is how it shakes out. But uh, looks like Mark Wilson has lost a little bit of time. Uh, Todd Baron Pietri, uh, he is he has gotten by Nathan Lafayette. Not sure if Nathan had a little bit of an issue while I was focused on a different camera there. Uh, but either way. We will uh, carry on through here as we are now five laps in to an estimated 19 here on the evening. So I would expect pit stops. Again, typically what we see is pit stops right around uh, that. I'd say that five to 15 it kind of depends on the circumstance as well some drivers will uh you know they'll take more pit stops they'll take a pit stop at a different time depending on the battle that they're in uh where you have this battle here from about fourth on back uh the pit stop will be a little bit more uh important uh because you may be using that pit stop to jump uh the guy in front of you if you're not able to get by him on circuit when you have the guys kind of running by themselves they will be a little bit more apt to just kind of run and uh just you know make the pit stop as as safety rather than for track position now jp phillips he is trying to tag in uh to the back of uh this battle that is nathan lafayette who lost time from the battle that was in front of him Going a little bit further back and just getting everybody here on circuit. You have Mark Adji and uh, Greg Harris there. They are the last cars still on the lead lap, 15th and 16th at present. They are uh, doing their best there in those positions. And again, the battle seeming, this is going to be probably the battle for the race, I'm assuming. This is going to be the battle that uh, we're going to follow the most on the evening. It's going to be Mark Wilson in that 323 and Les Turner. Turner holding a pretty wheel here. They're both going to go wide, try to keep it on circuit, but... Mark Wilson's going to get a better run. He's going to drag race him down into turn number two here. He's going to have the opportunity. And Mark Wilson said he was kicking himself after last week. He went against his normal race mentality and uh, doing so caught him into an incident. Uh, so he told himself he was going to enter this race with uh, his regular mindset of getting to the end and taking advantage of it, not overdriving. And he is doing just that. And you can see running a defensive line on in. And this all allows Todd Bear and Pietri to close back in just behind. And that makes it a three-car battle for that fourth spot.
These guys carrying on here, and Kodrowski, he is trying to now hold off. He's trying to hold on to that third spot. Dave Hill is uh, actually, no, Kodrowski rather, trying to close in on past Dave Hill, as a matter of fact. Here, guys, I'm just a little bit, I'm still trying to figure out this 21st position situation. Uh, it's really distracting me here, so I do apologize if it's uh, kind of taking my eye off things here, but uh, I'm just, uh, it, it's a very weird anomaly here that I'm dealing with, so I'm just trying to figure that on out. But, uh, you can see Kodrowski here trying to uh, make a move, and we'll see what, the, we'll pull up our battle tracker here. And you can see last time by a 39.2 to a 38.7, so significantly faster. But now, the problem that he will be having is that he has the battle and he now has the the lack of aerodynamics which is going to hurt him he's going to now go down the back straight away here and i believe he's going to head into turn number seven the right hand kink turn number seven and yes indeed now he's going to have a hard switch back to the right hand of the track because now he has a 90 degree turn number eight bears back to the right for a little crest right hand corner here and that puts you on the little shoot Leading on to the drag strip here in between turns number 11 and number 12 here at Hockingheim. Now you head into the stadium section where passing can be done. A little bit slower speeds here, but passing can certainly be done here in the stadium section. Set yourself up for turn number 13, the little roundabout, uh, not quite a hairpin, but certainly a a, a, a aggressive turn now you're in 15 and 16 back onto the pit straight so now if he can get close enough if he can still keep the air on the nose through turn number one might be able to set himself up for a move into turn number two but he was not able to do so he fell back there in the dra in the uh, exit of turn number one and wasn't able uh, going up the hill uh, into turn number two wasn't able to make anything happen there So he will uh, fall back and relinquish that spot and maybe he can uh, get back on the horse there and figure something out But uh, not for now. He'll fall back in line. D. Ryan Robertson has pulled away by about uh, two and a half seconds So he's just Ryan Robertson doing Ryan Robertson things here on the evening uh, but back to third, you have that. Uh, Dennis Griffin having a battle with Nathan Lafayette. This is eighth and ninth here. They were having a battle, but that battle seems to have uh, fizzled out for the time being, but uh, we will indeed keep an eye on that. Our timer here, about 16 minutes. We're already about halfway through today's race. And we're seen a lot of spread out action a lot of spread out events right now everyone kind of in their own bubble or we have little uh two car breakaways or you know something on those lines kind of what we're seeing here today um and ryan just has that pace we'll pull up the lap times on the ticker i think i can i just i don't know why that is doing that it is uh, it it's trying to work properly and then it just completely just glitches out i'll have to go back and go to a beta build or something but either way that's hopefully not too distracting for you at home but again ryan he is running approximately you can see a 38 6 he's running about four tenths of a second faster so this race is kind of one of those just don't screw up races but here comes kadroski has another dive here on dave hill now coming into the stadium section turn number um i think he's into uh turn number eight right now if i'm not mistaken and we'll see what he can set himself up for as they head back on to the drag strip. Uh, turn number 11 into number 12 uh, is where we are uh, finding ourselves right now. And Kodrowski is just doing everything he can, but just does not have enough at this moment now in the stadium section. Really diving and not in there. 
Uh, Dave Hill being conservative, just trying not to mess up. And at present, um, it is really a big fight. He's on ultimate defense, but he hasn't cracked yet. He hasn't had um, any dents in the armor quite yet. Doing a great job all the while. Ryan pulls away, and Kadrosi just trying to see if he can do anything to get by. I don't think he's going to have a chance for the win, barring any catastrophe from Ryan, but second is certainly a better point state than third. And he'll take a look, he'll take a peek, but falls back into line, and he'll recoup. Uh, Gerald Livingston in the Red Sox mobile there, that number 67 Red Sox Audi. He's closing in on Scott Husted there, that number... 12 Porsche. That's going to be for the 10th spot. They are in uh, relatively close proximity here. Just enter in turn number one. So as we see halfway being uh, as we see halfway right now come across the board pit stops should come out pretty soon I would expect more guys but we have had Dennis Griffin and uh, Dwayne McCarthy already come to the attention of their crews for approximately nine second pit stops uh, but obviously not no one up front to come in uh, and we will try and uh, follow what's going on there, but Kodrowski still, this is probably the best battle on the track. Actually, I take that back. Baron Pietri and Les Turner, the best battle on the track. closest battle so we have three battles on track to all that are within pretty much the same vicinity here Scott Husted and Gerald Livingston uh, they are within that 10th and 11th spot about a half second apart uh, Les Turner and Todd Mayer and Pietri they are about three tenths of a second apart probably the best battle here good drafting opportunity for Mayer and Pietri heading off into the hairpin you can see he pulls back in the line you can see from this angle how sharp that corner really is um, but they won't be able to do anything with that and uh, again this is the closest battle on track and Les Turner playing that great defense here uh, but here comes Baron Pietri with a look to the left is he going to force it he's not going to have to force it Les Turner's just going to give it to him Looks like up front, we're still having Dave Hill and Mark Kedrowski within close proximity here. And that is, again, still for that second spot. Mark just showing a lot of patience here. Maybe he's going to use the pit stop as an opportunity to try and figure out what's going on here. If he's going to try and maybe jump him in the pits. Uh, Kedrowski typically one to take aggressive fuel strategies from the time that I remember. So I'll be interested to see if indeed he is able to overcome the pit cycle there. Maybe he'll jump him, get, take a little bit less fuel. Speaking of guys in the pits taking fuel, that's Gerald Livingston in the number 67 Audi coming to the attention of his pits. Did he overshoot his pit box? Yes, he did. He's got to put it in reverse. Chronic mistake there. That'll take him out of that 10th spot, put him all the way back, probably to last on the lead lap. See here on the stint graphic, and uh, Greg Harris. Yeah, oh, for some reason, the stint graphic wants to work appropriately, uh, but my other timer is uh, not working appropriately. Not sure what that's all about. Um, let's see, does my lap time graphic work? Nope. So it's yeah. 
Uh, this is why you don't do updates, folks. I did an update to my software because there was a new funky feature that I wanted to have, and what happens? It backfires on me. So, uh, we'll see if we can roll that one back for a future broadcast. But Ryan, just doing Ryan things up by five seconds, kind of just on a Thursday night cruise here at Hockingheim, as now we're within the 10-minute mark in today's race. Still have all but two drivers on track. Uh, Kevin Kyle, Sheldon Rosenbaum out of the race, given that lap one incident. 8.08 of Todd Mayer and Pietri coming into the pits. He uh, will sacrifice his fifth spot. And he will come to the attention of his crew. Again, no tires, just fuel. Uh, we'll see how much fuel he takes and where he blends out in the grand scheme of things. And uh, still waiting on basically everybody else. We still have about 10 drivers on circuit still yet to make their pit stops. Uh, Scott Husted as well. Uh, he is now uh, exiting his stall. I think that's Ed Sutcliffe in that Ferrari. He is exiting his pit stall. So now we await basically the top eight uh, to come to the attention of their crew. As Ryan Robertson exits 11 into turn number 12. And into the stadium section here. He is running lap times approximately three to four sec uh, tenths of a second faster per lap than anybody else. Uh, here is a battle for seventh and eighth. You have Nathan Lafayette and Andrew Humphrey waiting on both of them to still come to the pit stop as they will uh, enter the stadium section. Now you can see the sun here in the stadium section is uh, going to be quite the distraction, especially I know there's a couple of virtual reality drivers in this race and I know on the iRacing service with the HDR bloom and all that fun stuff that um, the solar effects in VR are painfully realistic to the point where it is a lot more detrimental than uh, you would expect uh, on the monitor side. But here comes Dave Hill, teammate Mark Wilson coming to the pits, as well as Les Turner. So we will see if Dave can over uh, can bypass Mark Kodrowski when he inevitably makes his pit stop. It looks like on average the pit stops are right around nine, nine and a half seconds. So we'll see if that trend does continue. Of course, the longer you stay out, the less fuel you will ultimately need. Uh, therefore, the shorter the pit stop you can make. Um, let's see as uh, Ryan, I think he is... Or is he on circuit right now? I think he's coming to the back end of the lap, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he is. He's not. Now he's just exiting 11. Now he's in a 12. So we'll see if he comes to the pits. We're estimating about five more laps here in this race. Turning laps about a minute and a half around Hockingheim here. So if you do the math, approximately five laps. That could be swayed down to four. Ultimately, it just depends on how the pit road cycle works for Ryan here as he's going to come on to the final corner here turn number 16 and he's going to take that 210 to the pits got to take it as cautiously as you can because you don't really have anything to uh, push for you can take a conservative route you can run a cautious pit entry here uh, mark kadrowski will also come to the attention of his crew so we do expect barring a on expected mistake by Ryan. He should be able to exit the pits fine, but we are going to be very interested to see how Dave Hill musters it. Dave Hill coming off the final corner right now. And Mark Kadrowski still in his stall. I think this is going to give Dave Hill the second spot. And coming through one. Mark Kadrowski's not going to be up to speed, but he's getting up to speed quickly here. Coming down the straightaway and he will he's going to have to send it He's not going to be able to. Dave Hill will come out in second by a whisker there. Kodrowski just, uh, he took less, he rather took more fuel here. As I'll pull up on the pit stop graphic right here. See Dave Hill with a uh, 7.8 second pit stop to a 9 second pit stop for Mark Kodrowski there. So that difference of about a second and a half ultimately was what created that leapfrog eff effect there.
through the cycling. It looks like Ryan has uh, extended his lead by about two seconds. He was roughly five, if my memory serves correctly. Now he's up to a seven second lead. So again, he just has to run his pace. And Actually, I think I'm, I'm backwards right now. So I have an ear infection, so I'm not myself right now. So yeah, Dave Hill, he was under fire from Kudrowski. So Kudrowski, I have to inverse what I said. Kudrowski almost flip-flopped and passed Dave Hill rather than the inverse of what I said. So yes, Mark Kudrowski almost surpassed Dave Hill in the pits, but unfortunately for him, missed it by a whisker there. I got my, I had everything right except the main plot there. I had it backwards. So Kudrowski, they're basically in the same spot they were in, but now Kudrowski will just have to see if he's a little bit more uh, aggressive trying to get by. Of course, they'll want to do it cleanly, but if he puts any more emphasis on trying to get by as the, the race comes to its waning stages, then I'm kind of overcoming a cold and an ear infection here. So not quite myself in on double duty night, but uh, enjoying the show here, even if I'm a little bit off my kilter. But next week we will have Bradley Dalton in the booth with me, so that will be fun and a good way to wrap up our Red Sox season here on the channel. Uh, Andrew Humphrey and Nathan Lafayette, they are having a pretty spicy battle right now for that eighth spot. You can see just in front of him is J.P. Phillips, so we'll see if uh, they are able to make that a three-car battle for that ninth position here. It's coming through turn number five, and we're going to have ourselves a drag race into turn number six. You can see left side of your screen, that's going to be Humphrey. He's going to go full dive there into the hairpin. Pretty sure Lafayette just said, go ahead and take it, and he'll relinquish that spot, drop back to the ninth spot. And uh, that'll be about two seconds for Humphrey if he's going to make any moves or progress towards J.P. Phillips. And with an estimated about three laps to go, I don't know if he's going to have time to do that. But he's going to cross the stripe here. So this is, this is going to be uh, supremely close as we're crossing the stripe here with three minutes and ten seconds. Got an average lap here is about a minute 38. Uh, let me switch over to my timer for a second. Um, my lap times. Uh, so my my estimator is saying three laps to go. I am inclined to think that it's right, but I think we're going to be right on the money whether we have two or three laps to go. We'll have to follow when exactly Ryan Robertson gets to the start finish line and ultimately what Barney, our virtual flag man, um, decides to offer us here. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, again, a little bit further back, you got Dave Hill, who is uh, kind of maintaining that gap over Kudrowski. Kudrowski not able to uh, overpower him. Uh, that's Mark Adji in front. Adji may slow up Hill here just a little bit. He got really out of the way. I thought maybe that would have opened up the door for Kudrowski, but it didn't detriment our leaders at all. But these leaders, uh, second and third here on the podium, still the closest battle on track. But as we go up to Ryan Robinson here, again, we're going to look at that timer. We're heading into the stadium section, and we're going to see where we cross the stripe in relation to about a minute and 40. And uh, just based on what we see here, I do think we're going to be below a minute 40. Um, so I am going to use a significant amount of confidence here and say that we are going to come to the white flag lap here. Uh, yeah, most certainly we are. It's a minute 38 now, so we're going to hit that stripe with about a minute and 30. And, uh, yep, you can see it there on the long shot. Barney has the flag in hand, so this is going to be one more lap here around the Hockingheim ring for Ryan Robertson. Kodrowski doesn't look like he's going to be close enough to get that second spot. He almost did it in the pits, but fell back. Mark Wilson, solid run for him in the fourth spot with Todd Mayer and Pietri looking to get a top five. Les Turner had a top five car, top five in practice, but just dropped outside of it. Uh, but you never know what can happen here in a lap at a very long circuit. Very unfortunate, I just realized Tommy Ryan not actually here tonight. Uh, he was fast in practice, our points leader, but he'll use this as a drop week. Uh, heading into our season finale next week. But uh, Ryan Robertson, who is not quite in the points pitcher here this year, just due to uh, his participation. I'll see how it shakes out with the final drop week standings after the fact. But as it stands right now, he is 20th in the standings. So um, he is not going to be a champion this season. But we'll see how it shakes out between Tommy Ryan and Dave Hill. Perhaps we'll have a word from Dave Hill after this race. But 
Ryan Robinson, this is one of those few races, well, not only few races, this is one of those frequent races with Ryan where he just, he has him covered. He's, there's been a couple races this season where, um, you know, maybe Mitch Heller had some pace or someone else had some pace and Ryan was just a little bit off, but it's another one of those royal butt whoopings here that Ryan has uh, placed upon them many a times here over the course of the Red Sox Racing League season. And he's going to come through turn number 15 into 16. And he's going to round the corner here. And he's going to be a winner in Germany. Dominating fashion. Ryan Robertson wins here at the Hockingheim ring. Six and a half seconds back. You have Dave Hill with a second. And Mark Kodrowski, a solid effort. Couldn't quite muster it. Gets a third. Mark Wilson going to be in fourth. So a good run for that team there. And then there goes Todd Mayer and Pietri to round out our top five. And as the rest of the field comes by, I don't see any live battles here for position. There's J.P. Phillips, Nathan Lafayette. Quiet run for uh, Dennis Griffin there. He'll finish in the ninth spot. Yeah, so a good run by uh, Ryan Robertson here on the evening as everybody crosses the stripe for their laps here. And, of course, in Red Sox Racing League action, they do have to make it to the start-finish line under their own power, or rather enter the pit. So still working on their cool-down lap. But while they work on their cool-down lap, we're going to go up to uh, track side and uh, go ahead and give you the starting, the starting lineup, give you the finishing order today from the Hockingheim ring. Getting the victory here today. Ryan Robertson by six and a half seconds over Mark Kedrowski, who was a second or so behind him. Uh, Mark Wilson in fourth with Todd Baron Pietri in the fifth spot. Les Turner in sixth. J.P. Phillips in seventh. Nathan Lafayette in eighth. Humphrey, rather Griffin and Humphrey running out our top ten. Next page of results. Scott Husted in 11th. Dwayne McCarthy in 12th. Ed Sutcliffe in 13th. Then we have Gerald Livingston, Mark Adji rounds out our top 15, and then rounding out our top 20, Robert Seneville, Jim Graziano, Bill Paul Lucky, Greg Harris, and Kevin Kyle. Uh, remember, he had uh, he was in that lap one skirmish, and then our Sheldon Rosenbaum did not take to the grid, nor did uh, Brian Irby here on the evening. So uh, we are going to go and uh, talk to our race winner. He is already here with us, so... All right, Ryan Robertson doing Ryan Robertson things. You seem to have him covered. And all, I mean, there really wasn't a point here today where you weren't having him covered, man. Uh, is this just a track that you seem to like, or did you just find the secret sauce? I think it's a track that benefits kind of taking more and more risks with it. It's such a unique track to most things that we run. I mean, it has every type of corner. The track, you can track extend like pretty far out so it's knowing where those you know those little lines are to <laughs> gain that extra tenth in a corner and whatnot um i don't know I, i've always just enjoyed this track it's just a you know it's a great track to to drive around and see how far you can you know get over get over the curbs without one xing or you know losing the losing the car because these curves drop off and uh it can be detrimental pretty pretty bad yeah, I think there's a couple of those 3D curbs here, so you do have to kind of be careful with those. But I got to ask you, as someone who dominates races and didn't really have a threat here today, is there something that you're doing mid-race to kind of keep your focus? When you know you're up and, you know, barring a mistake, you're not going to lose this thing. Are you kind of doing certain things, you know, trying to learn things to apply to other situations to keep yourself focused? Because I know when I lead races by a, a big margin, I find it very easy to kind of go mentally astray and then I end up screwing up. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mostly just kind of keep an eye on my, on my relative and, you know, attempt not to change too much. Like, I don't want to underdrive, but really one of the things I've, I've struggled with throughout my entire time was overdriving the car where if I'm like, okay, I'm losing some time, I'm going to try to make up this corner. I'll break a little later and then that will just heat up the tires too much or not. So it's, it's pretty much just trying to hit those lap times and just focused on, all right, you know, if, if I mess up a corner, okay, let's make sure I don't lose more time in the next corner, not try to make up that time. Um, and you know, it's just 
it's just trying to find those little improvements, feel where the tire is, and you know, again, not overdrive it because as soon as you do that or get caught up in, in in your mirrors or anything like that, you're just gonna, you know, lose time hand over fist, and you'll have guys right up back on you. Yeah, exactly that, man. But you do your you do your stuff. Obviously, you're not in a championship picture this week, but uh, hopefully, we'll see you next week, and we'll see if you can put on a show. Uh, I don't even know where we are, but wherever we are, see if we can put on a show next week too. For sure. Thanks, Corey. All, right. All right, see ya. And looks like we got Mark Kodrowski here. Mark, you battled with Dave for the entirety of the race. You almost leapfrogged him in that pit cycle there. Oh. You had to drive it in deep, and you just couldn't quite muster it, and then kind of probably stuck in the arrow wash there and had to settle for third. What was that battle like uh, uh, with oh, Dave man. in the entirety? Yeah, it was uh, it was clutch. It's like we were both going, you know, pretty hard, you know, uh, hard out, and then uh, it just, you know, it, I didn't get as good of a starting position as him. Uh, during qualifying, I was like two and a half tenths up, and I blew it in the last turn. It's like uh, in the final lap, it's like oh, ho, ho. and that would have, uh, you know, secured me a better, you know, uh, you know, second place, uh, you know, starting out the race. And then yeah, it's like I've gotten much better at my, um, uh, you know, uh, pit stops, uh, you know, leaving out of the pit stops. The Audi has a tendency to bog down. And so uh, um, I uh, just gunned a little bit and spun the tires, and that uh, solved it a little bit. So, but you know, living there in last time, you know, I almost got him, you know, uh, after the pit stop. So next time we'll get him for sure. Yeah, was it was it a matter? I know, obviously, a lot of flat corners here, high speed bends. Was it a matter of just cutting that arrow push, being stuck behind him there for the most part? Um, yeah, yeah, a little bit, but. Um, Honestly, I didn't feel the air push at all. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, you know. Well, well Dave's yeah. a fast guy, so I guess that's what it is. <laughs> that's ultimately no, but, uh, what it is, man. You, you know, uh, you mentioned the air push, and probably I felt that, but, you know, I felt it the whole time because it was behind him the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you never got that clean air, but either way, a podium yeah. effort here today, and uh, we'll see what you yeah, can do next you. week in the season finale. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll see you later. All right, and now uh, Dave Hill, who you had that battle with Mark all race. He said he had a little bit of dirty air, but you had the speed. You had to really race him out of the pit there on the blend lap, and uh, you just were able to do so and maintain. Man, what was that like uh, from your perspective? Yeah, I was uh, I was shocked that uh, he was able to get another lap out of the car because uh, I I was on on fumes that lap and uh, had no choice, and I just was once I saw him. Uh, keep going around I was like oh crap well I better stay focused and just nail this pit stop as best I can because if he runs a good lap now um, and I came out right in traffic but luckily enough uh, a couple lap cars they, they let me go by and then I had a couple seconds up to the next set of guys who were who were all pitting so I was able to get a fairly clean lap done and uh, yeah like you said just barely squeaked by him at the end there so it was tough I, uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't sweating a little bit and I'm looking here at the point standings, which of course they're a little bit hard to calculate because we don't know how the drop weeks are going to fare. Of course, we know Tommy is using this as a drop week because he's not here. Uh, but being said, you entered today's race 16 points behind him. We don't know how the drop weeks are going to play, but whatever it is, it's going to be a tight pitcher heading into next week's race, which off the top of my head, I don't remember where it is. Uh, perhaps you do, but either way, with the championship being really tight next week, uh, what's your confidence level or um, fear level heading into that event? Yeah, I'd like to, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, like you said, I, I'm not too sure. We'll, we'll see how the, the drop weeks go, but uh, this, this season's been a blast. Long I think Beach, we're going to Long we're going. Beach. Yep. Yeah, so uh, I do enjoy that track um, uh, a lot more than the one we just ran. This one was, was uh, pretty tough for me, but uh, uh, I do enjoy Long Beach, and yeah, I guess we'll uh, we'll see what happens between those walls there. <laughs> yeah, it's always a fun one to cover and a pretty track to look at too. Luckily, it won't be raining yet. So, uh, but congrats on a solid run, man, and uh, we'll see how the title fight ends up next week for you. Excellent, appreciate that, Corey. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. All right, well, that is going to be a broadcast here today on the channel. I want to thank everyone for tuning in here to PTR TV. If it's your first time, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, all that fun stuff. 
We will be live, I think basically we're free until Tuesday now, so we'll be back with the AMS season finale, uh, American Muscle Series. They have their finale next week, and then the Red Sox, racingly, will be back with their finale, so kind of a series wrap-up week here on the channel. But that's going to be Corey signing out of the booth. Have a great night, and we'll catch you next time.